Good morning. Um, excuse my bleary eyed appearance, I've only just got in. I'm just waiting for a student to turn up. <coughs> got a, about 10 minutes, so I thought I'd give you a quick cra crash course. I can't even speak. Crash course on how to play 120 chords in, say, 10 minutes, which is a bit of an achievement if we can do it, which I know that you can. All right, so first of all, we're going to use bar chords to do this. Let's look at the basic shapes. What is a bar chord? Okay, it's a, it's a chord, a simple shape. Say, for example, we play an E. Imagine this here, this nut. That's a bar. It looks like a bar, all right? If I were to rearrange those three fingers like that and put that there, you can see where this bar chord comes from, can't you? See, when you play it like that, a lot of people don't realise that it's based on the same shape because, you know, it can look a bit alien when you're using different fingers. But really, it's the same shape moved up the neck. Now, you could, of course, use a, use a capo which is what a lot of players do, but you know, electric guitarists tend not to use it. So let's look at five shapes here based on the chord of E, and then let's look at what we can do with them. All right, so we've got our E major like that. If I want to make that into a minor chord, I take off my first finger. If I want to turn it into a seventh chord, I take off my third finger. If I want to make it into a minor seventh chord, I take them both off. And if I want to play a major seventh, I will put my first finger there on the third string, my second finger on the fourth string at the first fret above it, and my third finger there. You could do it like with one finger if your fingers are broad enough. So we've got five different shapes. It's important that we know them in their open position, all right? So let's look at this one to start with. So we know this is the chord E, and the root note for the chord E, or any of the five different chords that we've just played, the minor, the seventh, is this note here, E major, E minor, E seventh, E minor seventh, E major seventh, all right? So that's important. This is the important thing that we need to remember, E being the root note. If I was to move that up, wouldn't it be nice if I could just do that? Well, I can't because I need to look after all these open strings that are now going to be jingling around, which we don't want. So I have to use my first finger to play, to, to take the place of this. Okay, this is my capo finger, if you like, or bar, B-A-R-R-E. -R -E. Don't know why it's spelled like that, don't really care. We just know that that's what it is. So I'm going to put those three fingers there now. And you'll notice that they're the same shape as the E, but played with different fingers. So major chord, minor, seventh, minor seventh, and I'm going to just slot that finger between the two for the major seventh. But it's not E anymore, because it's moved up the neck, so what is it? Well, that finger now is playing that string, that string at this first fret. What's the name of that note? It was E. The next note along, the scale is F. There's no sharp and flat between E and F, and between B and C. Why? I don't know. I don't care. But there isn't, okay? So E, straight to F. So now we're playing F major, F minor, F seventh, F minor seventh, and F major seventh. All right, so there's five different little chords there, which is great. If I move that up one more, what's the name of that chord? Well, it was F there. We've moved up a fret. Um, F sharp, what does sharp mean? It means higher. Do we need to know anything else? No, it just means higher. If we know that F, and somebody says F sharp, move it up one fret, F sharp. If I wanted you to play an F sharp seventh, you'd say, well, what did I do for the other sevenths? I took off that finger. If I wanted an F sharp minor, I take off that finger. If I wanted an F sharp minor seventh, I take them both off, an F sharp major seventh. So you get the idea, whatever's going on here is exactly the same anywhere down the neck. If I'm at F sharp there when I move up to the next fret, F sharp, one, two, three, two, three, F, G. I'm playing G now. G major, G minor, G seventh, G minor seventh, G major seventh, all right, and so on. Now, I, I trust you get that bit. Now, moving up and down the neck, you know, when you're playing live, you know, you've got to think on your feet. You can't, you haven't got time to start, you know, thinking about theory. You've got to know quickly. How do we know, how do we remember where we are on the neck? instantly. Look at these three dots. G, A, and B. G, A, B. What can we do to remember that? Girls and boys. I'll remember that. Girls and boys. So if I said, play A, quick, 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 quick. You just go for there. Where's A flat? Flat's lower than, flat's lower than A. 
okay? Because that's what flat means. G. Just play G sharp. Sharp, sharp's higher. But hang on a minute, isn't A flat and G sharp, they're the same? Yes, they are. You can. It can be referred to as A flat, because it's lower than A, or G sharp, because it's higher than G, okay? So it's, it's nice to know that, isn't it? You know, it's not really well explained that, I don't think. So if we're at A there, how do we know we're at A? Because we're gonna use this little dot rule, girls and from A. What would the one in front of it be? A sharp, because it's higher than A. And this one is B. So what's that one? Well, it's, you've just said it's A sharp. It is, but it's also B flat, because it's lower than B. You get the idea? And in books, you'll see it written sometimes as A sharp or B flat, as long as you understand that it's the same thing. Remember, it's very important. Sharp means higher when you're looking at others, and flat means lower. So as long as you know where the main chord is, if I'm there at A, A flat, that's lower. A sharp is higher. All right, that's all you need to know. Girls and boys, you can stumble your way to the 12th fret where the octave is. So if you're at B, what would the next one be? B sharp. No, there's no, nothing between B, there's no flat and sharp between B and C. Why is that? I don't know, and I don't care. I just need to know that, that, that there isn't one. On a piano, you can see that quite clearly because you've got you know the two white keys together when you haven't got any black ones, and then further along, you've got another two white keys. That's where your, your B and C are, and, and your E and your, and your F, or the other way around, whatever it is. And it doesn't matter what instrument you play, it's always the same. So we're at B, straight to C. C sharp, D. Now C sharp, because it's higher than C, can also refer to as D flat because it's lower than D. Okay, so it's C sharp, D, D sharp because it's higher than D, E. Where there's two dots. Okay, that tells you we've reached the end of the line. So it's 12 frets, and that's the end of the road. These dots here, doom, doom, that's another G, A, B, another girls and boys, because it's just everything just repeats from then on in. Okay, so if you think about it, we've just learned how to play. We've got five inversions of the chord here. We've got, we've got five, you know, five different um, the minors and the, and the, and the minor sevens, etc. Let's look at the. Let's go to the fifth fret. What's that? A. How do we know? Girls and A. A major. A minor. A seventh. A minor seventh. A major seventh. Multiply those five shapes by the twelve frets on the guitar. Five, twelve, sixty. So we've got sixty chords. All right which is cool, all right? Very cool, especially as we've only been playing it for seven minutes. But let's look at the other main bar chord, which is based around the chord of A. I'm gonna play the A like this. Some people play it like that. I don't, because I play a lot of classical guitar, and we always play it like this, all right? So we've got an A. This is the root note now, okay? So that's the A string, A. So everything we're gonna do now is gonna be, this is your main note. Forget about this one. This is the one that we need to think about the most, A major. For the minor, we play it like that, as you know. For the seventh, we play it like this. For the minor seventh, it's like an A minor, but with this finger off. And for the major seventh, it's like the A seventh, but with this first finger slotted between the two, which is a lovely chord. All right? Now, if we know that's A, and we move it up one, the same rules apply, but this is your bass note now. It's higher than A, A sharp. Let's move it up again. In the alphabet B. So if that's A sharp, if it's higher than A, and that's B there, it can also be referred to as B flat because it's lower than B, and that's the common way you're using that. B flat is, is used more than A sharp, but they're both the same. B flat because it's lower than B, A sharp because it's higher than A. So we're at B. Now these three dots here uh, are easier to you know when you're referring to the fifth string C. D and E. You don't really need the silly rhyme because it, 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 you know, it follows the alphabet C, D, E. So when you're playing the first shape, girls and boys, C, D, E, all right? So there's C, D. Sounds like Billy Shears. <laughs> Maybe they wrote it when they were figuring out their bar chords, who knows? Okay, so, so let's assume we're at C there, okay? Uh, C minor would be that. C seventh would be that. C minor seventh would be that. And C major seventh would be that. Don't forget, it's just a mirror of what we did here. The only difference is positioning on the neck. All right? So if I said I want you to play E flat minor seventh using the, the A shape, E flat minor seventh, you say, oh dear, what's the, where's that? 
you know, when you think, okay, I'm gonna, I can work this out. So we're, we're looking at the A string. So C, D, E. What chord did I say? E flat minor seven, was it? So there's E there. E flat would be one lower, because flat means lower. Minor seven, so there's a minor seven. If I wanted E flat, I'd just play the E flat major, E flat minor, E flat minor seven, Pretty straightforward when you know it. So the key is these little dots. Girls and boys, if you're playing the chord that resembles the F, and C, D, E, if you're looking at the chord that resembles the, based on the A shape. The one's based on the E shape, or F shape as a lot of people call it. They always remember F because it's a horrible bloody chord to learn, okay? But it's based on E, E and A. They're your two main bar chords, E, A, okay? E, A. And whatever you do with these three, as long as you know where the root note is, if I'm at the, say I'm here, what's the name of that chord? It's based on the E shape. There's a G there, because we know that because it's girls, so it's G sharp, or it could be A flat. And then whatever I do with these three fingers determines whether it's a minor or a seven. So if I take the second finger off, it's G sharp minor or A flat minor. If I take the little finger off, it's G sharp seventh or A flat seventh. If I take them both off, it's G sharp minor seventh or A flat minor seventh. Okay, and the major seventh is when I just whack that finger. Some people play it like that. It's a bit awkward that. As you've got broader fingers as I now have, then you can just put one finger across two strings. And this is important. If ever you're playing in a band, say you've got a few guitars, the acoustic guitar player will tend to play it in versions. Let's look at, say, say we're gonna play um, Say we wanted a, a G, so the, the acoustic player would be happily going. Okay, first electric guitar would be there. Now the second electric guitar, we don't want, he doesn't want to play the same as you. So we say, well, what can I do? I want to play a long heels. So he's going to try and play an inversion based on the A shape. So let's have a look at what we've got. C, D, E, F, F sharp, G. But of course, by that, this point you'd go and you'd use one finger to abbreviate those three strings. Right, look, the point is, you've got five inversions on each of those um, each of those shapes. You've got 12 frets, five 12 is 60 for, for the shape one, 60 chords for, for the other one, shape two. That's 120 chords. We'd be doing it 12 minutes and 45 seconds. That's not bad. Um, as I say, this is a quick crash course. I'll go into it in more detail. One more time then, when you're playing the chord based on the E, on the e chord, on the E shape, it's girls and boys. G, A, B. And if you're playing it based on the A, it's C, D and E. And remember, flat means lower. G flat. G sharp. All right? A flat. A sharp. B flat. B don't say B sharp, there's no such thing, straight to C, all right? A sharp, uh, so G sharp, A flat. It can be referred to as G sharp or A flat. They're both the same. Similarly with, with the minor chord, you know, G sharp minor, A flat minor, both the same. Remember that. Hope you've uh, enjoyed this. I know it's been brief, but um, I've got to go now because I've got a, a student turning up any minute. So I'll catch you later. Any questions, feel free to message me. Take care, bye.